What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS4 and PS5 video. In this one, we are revisiting the Okaji Shadow King save exploit, the Mastercore exploit by uh, Macaulay that was originally discovered by Seaturt. So basically, there's been a few updates to this exploit, to the implementation, a few changes, as well as some stuff that people have figured out how to get certain PS2 homebrew and emulators running. So we're going to cover some of that stuff here in this video. If you want to know how to set up this exploit from start to finish, check out my full tutorial, which will be linked on screen and down in the video description. So first of all, if we take a look at some of the changes that were made here since my last video on this. So Macaulay's put out this new GitHub post for Mastercore PS2 Elf Loader. And uh, in here, if we head to the releases section, you can see there's been a number of different changes here. So first of all, in fact, this is actually brand new, 24 minutes ago. Okay, so I actually haven't seen this then. This is a new release. So this release contains significant reliability improvements by improving the number of out-of-bound out of bound writes that occur during the emulator escape. See the master core commit. Okay, so it looks like we have a reliability or stability improvement here. That's good news. So maybe some more things will work that were crashing before, perhaps. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but one of the things that was added as well is the fix for 10.01. So originally, the exploit wasn't really working properly on PS4s that were on 10.01 firmware. It was working fine on PS5 and on 9.00 PS4s, but not on 10.01. That's now been fixed. I've updated the link in the description of my tutorial to include the save, the pre-modded save for 10.01 that has the fixed version. So that should now work now if you follow that guide. So uh, yeah, that's been fixed in the latest version. But there's been a fundamental change in how the actual exploit is loaded. So originally, these ELF files, which are the actual payloads that allow the exploit to run different things. For example, there's the PS dialog. There's the light bar, which just changes the color of your PS4 or PS5 light bar on the controller. There's PS notification, which I think is just like a little hello world notification that pops up on screen. Mostly gimmicky stuff. Obviously, the real thing is the, the PS2 loader, which why is the PS2 loader not in the list here? I mean, it's in this one. Uh, that's weird. Maybe they didn't make any changes to that one. But uh, yeah, as you can see, PS Load Game Net is in here as well. So essentially, the way that this has been changed is that in the original exploit, these ELF files were included inside the actual save file. So that means if you wanted to load something else other than a PS2 ISO, if you wanted to do the light bar test or the Hello World test or anything like that, you'd have to create a separate save file for each exploit because they contain different ELF files. Whereas what's happened now is it's been changed so that the actual save file contains an ELF loader, but not the actual ELF file itself. And you have these ELF files that you can then send over the network, just like how you sent the PS2 ISO over the network to actually load it on the PS4 or PS5 itself. So that basically means that if any future ELF files come out that allow you to do other things with this exploit, you won't have to create a new modded save file every time for each one. You can just keep the save file you have at the moment and then just load the new ELF file over the network. So that's a handy improvement that's been made right there for convenience. And you've got the actual save decrypted save files here that you can import into your existing save. I'll have some pre-made saves available in the description as well with this new ELF loader version available. So you can just re-sign the save to your profile uh, for 9.00, 10.01 and the PS5 on 6.50. So you can check those out as well. But those are the changes that have been made there. Also, perhaps in the future, since we can load ELF files, maybe we could just load a regular PS2 ELF, like for homebrew, for PS2 homebrew or PS2 emulators or something, where we could just load the ELF file directly instead of loading a PS2 ISO. I did try that to see if that would work uh, with some things, but they all just crashed for me so far. But that's something that could potentially be done as well in the future with this. So in addition to that, we also have the release of the Mastercore file loader.exe and there's also some Python scripts. So this just makes it more convenient for loading the files over the network. So this exe allows you to send the ELF files and it will also allow you to send the ISO files as well for the PS2 loader, uh, which is just like a, a GUI program that you can use. It does get detected in a few antiviruses, at least the version that I was running. Maybe it's been fixed in newer versions here. The previous version did get detected quite a bit. So if you do run into that issue, you can use these Python script versions instead, which have the same functionality, the file loader for loading the ELF file, and then the send file for loading the PS2 ISO over the network. 
So you can use those instead of the EXE if you're running into issues with antiviruses. But uh, if not, you can just use this more convenient uh, EXE file that you can use instead. So let's take a look at how to actually load this on the PS5. Again, same on the PS4. So we're going to run the Okage Shadow King game. And I've got the new save file with the ALF loader on it ready to go. Okay, there we go. Okage Shadow King. We'll press the PS button and then restore game. And then it says waiting for PS2 ALF payload. So at this point, if we switch back over here, we're going to run the EXE, the master core file loader. We're going to load this and we're going to enter the PS5's IP address or PS4's IP address in this box down here and then select the file that you want to load. And in my case, that's going to be the PS load game net PS5 6.50 elf. We're going to go ahead and click load. And when I do that, you can see it comes up saying PS5 uh, loader network and waiting for game file, which is the same as the previous version where it would say waiting for connection. We're basically at that same stage now. So if we switch back over here, we can just select the ISO file to load. So I've got a, a Sega Genesis emulator for the PS2 as a PS2 ISO. We'll go ahead and load that. So we'll hit load. And there you go. You can see it loads up there. So you can see it says no games found on CD. I'll show you guys how you can add games to emulators and stuff as well in just a bit as well as kind of, you know, how to create your own PS2 ISOs if you want to mess around with some PS2 homebrew and try and get stuff like that running. Um, so there's been a few emulators that have been released. There's one that's about four emulators in one. They don't all work, but, you know, there's SNES Station or SNES Station. That's been working. I tested that out on um, Super Mario Kart. That worked just fine. No issues there, as you can see. I also tried uh, Super Mario 64, which surprisingly ran pretty well as well there on the PS5. So no issues there either. Uh, there were some emulators that weren't able to run. Um, I think the NES emulator didn't run and a couple of other ones. And then obviously there's this PGen, this uh, Genesis emulator that runs as well. Now you can obviously find PS2 ISOs with emulators on them that also contain a huge list of games already included. Obviously, I can't link to any of that stuff here in this video for obvious reasons. And they are quite big to the point where there are multiple gigabytes and it can take a long time to actually send the ISO over the network. So in my opinion, it's probably better to just download a version of the emulator that doesn't have any games with it. And then you can just add only the games that you want to play. That way it will transfer over a lot quicker. So I'm just going to give you guys a little uh, guide on how to actually kind of create your own ISOs for the PS2 so you can do stuff like that mess around with homebrew maybe remove games from an emulator to make it smaller so it'll transfer over quicker or add your own games that you want to add to the emulators as well so let's go ahead and do that here for this one so we'll go ahead and switch over to the computer again I'll leave a link to this one in the description because it doesn't contain any games with it uh, so it should be fine so I do have this all-in-one PS2 fake package cheats, which contains all the files that you need, all the programs you need to create custom PS2 ISOs. So if we go in here, this will be linked in the description. We've got CD, DVD, Gen, and IML2 ISO. So if we open up CD, DVD, Gen, get this program open, we'll create a new project. Now we've got the option for CD-ROM or DVD-ROM. This depends on the size of the ISO that you're building how many files, what's the what's the total file size. So obviously, if the file size is higher than what can fit on a CD-ROM, then you'll have to select DVD-ROM, which I think is about 700 megabytes or more, then you'll have to do DVD-ROM. But if it's like 700 megs or less, you can go with a CD-ROM and it should work fine. Now, as you can see, this emulator on its own is only 4.79 megabytes, so no issues with file size there. So what we're going to do is I'll create a new folder on the desktop called pgen for the emulator and then we'll take the actual ISO of the emulator I'll right click on it and I'll use 7-zip to open the archive I'll open the ISO so I can see all the files inside and I'll just highlight all of them and copy them into that folder and that will extract them from the ISO there we go and then I can just add whatever games I want to the emulator so that I can run them on the PS5 so I've got three Sonic games here Sonic 1, 2 and 3 so I'll just copy those into the games folder here and we should be good. And now I can just rebuild this into a PS2 ISO. So in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and use CD DVD Gen. So we basically take all the files here and we drag and drop them inside. 
Uh, the order of the files needs to match. I think newer versions of this application can copy them in in an unordered way. So you have to like copy them one by one so that they match the correct order. Uh, but with this older version, that doesn't seem to be an issue so far. So uh, I just keep using this one. But uh, yeah, so once we've got them all in here, as you can see here, we also want to check the system.cnf file. If I right click and open this in Notepad or Notepad++, we want to check the V mode to see if it's set to PAL or NTSC. Uh, so if it's PAL, then it's the European version or European settings. And if it's, uh, you know, NTSC, then it's uh, US settings that we'll need to apply here in CD, DVD, Gen. So because it's PAL, I'll go into volume and I'll change the license area to Europe. And obviously, if it's NTSC, you would set it to America. So we'll set it to Europe there. We'll put in SLUS9999, just a dummy ID. And then for the producer name, I'll just do PlayStation. And then that should be it. So we can do file, export IML file. And I'll just call this PS2 and hit save. And now we have a PS2 IML file. And then from here, we can then go ahead and build the ISO by heading back into this all-in-one fake package cheats and we'll go to IML to ISO. We'll run this application and then we'll go to open and we'll open the IML file, click open and then click on IML to ISO and that will convert it to an ISO file right there. There we go, we got PS2 ISO. So now all we have to do is go ahead and load this up again. So once again, I'll select my PS2 load game for the PS5 switch back over here and we'll go ahead and close out of this one now close game load it back up again and load the save up again okay here we go press start button restore game and of course we get oh oh interesting okay I actually crashed on the uh that's not happened to me before I guess that's the stability thing perhaps I should have used the the new one that was just released 24 minutes ago and I won't have that I may not have had that uh, crash, but uh, yeah, anyway, let's try this again. Uh, okay, so press start button, restore game. There we go, waiting for PS2 elf payload. All right, so once again, I'll click load. And then we get waiting for game disk or game file. So once again, we'll select it, but this time we'll select our custom one we made, PS2.ISO. We'll hit load, head to the console here takes a bit longer to send it over because we have a few ROMs on there. And here we go, Genesis emulator for PS2. But this time it doesn't say that we don't have any games available. So this time we should be good. Okay, so we can go to the games list and we'll select, I guess, Sonic the Hedgehog, the first one. And you can see there's some bugs here with the graphics. This is common in quite a few of these emulators at the moment. Uh, we still need a way to, you know, customize the PS2 emulator settings with the emulator file that was mentioned in the improvements for this um, exploit. Uh, we don't really have that at the moment, so we are still going to run into a lot of these kind of graphical bugs. However, the good thing is that it actually runs and a lot of emulators actually don't have uh, that many issues or they may have issues for the UI, but the actual gameplay is actually fine. There don't, doesn't appear to be that many issues here. It's mostly just flickering with the score and the um, the lives and stuff like that in the bottom left hand corner that are glitching out a little bit. But apart from that, as you can see, the game is running just fine here. There probably is a fair amount of input lag, it feels like, maybe a, a decent chunk because of course we're talking about a Genesis or Master System game that's running inside an emulator for the PS2, which is running inside an emulator for the PS4, which is running inside of the PS5. Uh, so there's multiple layers going on here, uh, which is uh, still pretty neat. So there's also the U-Launch menu that's been working for some other emulators. There's a 4-in-1 emulator going around, which contains, you know, multiple ELF files for multiple emulators that you can launch. And when you launch the actual emulator itself, when you launch the ISO, it will put you into the Launch menu or U-Launch menu, which basically you just go into CDFS, folder and then that gives you all the folders that are inside the ISO and then you just find one of the ELF files to run and select one of those files and it'll launch you into the emulator. Again, not all the emulators work in that 4-in-1 uh, ISO. 
However, a few of them do like SNES Station and the like Mario 64, Super Mario 64. Uh, those work. Uh, but obviously, again, I can't provide a link to that particular ISO because it contains games already included. But uh, yeah, it's still pretty awesome. You can run emulators for a variety of different games, you know, that were designed for the PS2 to be to run inside the PS2 that you can then run with the the PS2 emulator on the PS4 and PS5 uh, with this method, as you can see right here, uh, which is right here. In fact, there's even a new video clip that was captured from from me in the U-Launch menu or the Launch Elf menu, as you can see right here, captured on my PS5. But uh, yeah, anyway, so definitely some interesting things for the Masticore exploit. And of course, if more Elf files come out in future, uh, it should be easier to load them now that we've got this change in how the actual exploit runs. Now that it just runs the Elf loader and we can just send the Elf files over the network, any new Elf file comes out for something interesting, we can just load it with the existing save that we already have included. And yeah, improvements seem to be coming out pretty quick and fast here. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.